Welcome back to Drunk on Riding. Welcome back to the Drunk on Riding show. I'm your host, Warren Pulaski, and with me, as always, is my lovely wife, Kim. Hello. That's what you get. You get a hello. Kim, now that we're in 2023, how's 2022 looking back, look, looking to you in, in the rearview mirror? You, We had talked about this specifically in the last show, and you said, you know what? You know what? Wait, wait until next month. Wait until 2023 hits. Yeah. And, and, and let me know. Yeah. And, and ask again. So here, here I am, it's 2023. And uh, before we really get even started on the 2023-ness of our show, what, how's 2022 looking to you now? Really good, actually. Really? <laughs> 2023 so far making 2022 look really good, huh? <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's been, been a month. It's been a, it's been a year so far. It's been, uh, yeah, so 2022, whoa, what a year. <laughs> How have you been, Kim? I've been fine. Yeah? Yeah, fine. Uh, it's been a little crazy. How about you? How have you been? I've been, um, I, I've had my ups and downs uh, of, of, of recent. Um, of course, a, a big up. I, I published a short film, Level, mm -hmm. yep. uh, to everybody. I got, got some interesting reactions. I was told that it made people uncomfortable, that uh, it was a little too autobiographical, but the, you know, that was the entire point. Yeah. And so it was nice hearing my point made, hearing w my intent come across, but uh, I don't know necessarily that that translated into liking it. Whatever. Yeah. I don't know. I got it out there. It was nice to just get it out as, as it always is. When I get a piece of fiction out of my head, um, and on a low note, uh, my grandmother passed away mm -hmm. last week, and I had to deal with the whole grieving process. That was a bit rough. I had a hard time with that. Um, yeah, so that that's really how I'm doing it. But other than that, I, I will say I had a weird epiphany. I wanted to bring this up on the podcast. And Matthew, or our son Matthew, asked me. Uh, a few weeks back, he said, what, what's your favorite thing? And I said, well, family. You know, of course. My I, my family, you know, is my favorite thing. He goes, no, 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 no. What's your favorite thing to do? Like, what's your favorite thing? Mm -hmm. Activity, almost. I thought about it. And I realized two things. One is driving. I love driving. But that's a no. We've, we've known that for a long time. I love just driving anywhere. The other one that I thought of, though, was drinking, and not just alcohol, just drinking a beverage, a good, solid yeah. beverage, like a good glass of water, a good coffee, a good boba tea, a good milkshake, a good beer, yeah, a good cocktail, yeah, uh, a good anything, a good solid glass of milk, oh, I love, like, I, I would love to... I, I could just drink and not eat. Like, eating is good, but I so much prefer drinking. Like, I, I uh, since I've discovered that, this this knowledge of myself, um, I went and had champagne. Oh, oh, what what a special treat champagne is. And um, I never really yeah. thought of it that way before. It was kind of mind-opening. Yeah, it was, it was nice. We, we, we started a couple of days... Um, not days, no, we didn't, not in the morning, but um, our meals off, our night off with champagne. It was very special. Right? Yeah. I tried a new water today. You're you talking tried, about drinking. You tried liquid death today. Liquid death, yeah. What did you think of it? Uh, I've had better. Really? Mm. Now, is the Walgreens Icelandic water still in the lead? A hundred percent. What was what was it about the Liquid Death that you were you weren't into? It was in a can. That didn't that didn't go. With I it. cannot drink it in a in a can like just flat water in a can. Like it was like. I don't know. I don't know why I expect things in a can to either have seltzer or be like sweet, right? 
if I'm drinking from a can, like Snapple, sometimes you can get in a can, or lemonades you can get in a can, soda obviously you can get in a can, beer you can obviously get in a can, but to just open it up and drink it, just flat water, it was not okay. I, I, I had to pour it in a glass. I couldn't drink it in a can. I poured it in a glass. Um, it just put me off so much. There is something, there is like a flavor the can adds. I don't know how to explain that, but it's true. No, I, I understand what you mean. That, that aluminumness yeah. to it. There's like a metal crispness to it. And, and I don't it, want that from water. Too. I don't want it in water. I can understand that. But you, you, you like the seltzer water in a can. I do. I do. Just, but not the flat. This was water. flat, plain water. This was not flavored water. This was water, just water, just like you would get out of your sink or you know your refrigerator, wherever you get your water from. Still water, as they call it in the still. restaurant. Yeah, still water. This is still water in a can. It was not okay. Liquid death. It wasn't okay. I'm sorry. Well, in case you didn't know, this is the Drunk on Riding show, the flagship show for the Drunk on Riding channel, which you can find at youtube.com slash drunk on riding or drunk on riding.com, where you can check out the mostly full library of past episodes of the Drunk on Riding show and a whole lot more. And while you're there, be sure to subscribe and get tons of ad free access to every video and podcast and a whole bunch of exclusives. Uh, exclusive behind the scenes videos and previews, exclusive monthly podcasts, exclusive wallpapers, exclusive scripts, it's all sorts of fun stuff over at drunkonriding.com. To all our patrons out there, of course, including this episode's sponsors, Ari North and David, thank you, as always, for making this happen. Kim, I gotta tell you, I've been watching a lot of TV shows of late for some reason. Uh, Playing a lot of video games as well. I talked about this, I think, last time where I'm starting to fill in some of my cracks with, with this, and I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I really am. I, got, I watched app. I watched Iron Fist. Yeah. Really digging. The, really digging this whole Defenders arc this time of of this net this net Marvel Netflix series. I didn't really dig it the first time around, but I'm coming. I'm coming into it. You didn't dig the Iron Fist specifically. Well, you know, I, Iron Fist. Is, you liked Daredevil. Iron Fist is one of my favorite characters, so. <clears throat> yeah, Daredevil is really good. Still yeah. really good. You liked Jessica Jones. Uh, yes. Yeah. I like Jessica Jones for David Tennant. I still don't like looking at Jessica Jones. She bothers me. I know. It's horrible to say. I know. There's something about. Kristen wow. Ritter. That I I look at her and and it's she she bothers me she she upsets me, like she reminds me of Clayface like she's just not like fully sculpted slightly, I don't know it's awful I know it's awful f thing to say, but I just so many people find her like very attractive and I'm just like mm, no I don't like I don't want like she looks like she's been beat up and that's what her character is in the show and maybe that's why but like i i, I don't think that and luke cage was really good um i, I don't know iron fist has, has been good to you you know what else we watched though avatar watch that with matthew yeah you did yep that movie is really good you know it, it, <laughs> matthew liked it it's interesting because avatar has been kind of hit at over the years for its lack of cultural impact it's lack of sticking around everybody saw it but like nobody really went anywhere with it. And I think that's mostly just because it hasn't been merchandised to hell, like all the Disney stuff. But I'm, I assume with Disney now in the helm, at the helm, it, it, we're going to see lots of stuff coming out soon. Also watch The Pale Blue Eye, uh, which we, we watched, uh, we went away for the weekend um, with my brother, David. Oh, that... Which is lovely. Yeah, you you didn't... Did, did you watch part of it and then fall asleep? Was that the one you watched yeah. at night? Yeah. Yeah, I watched part of it. So it was Christian Bale and some guy yeah. perfectly oh, yeah. cast mm -hmm. as Edgar Allan Poe. And Christian Bale is this detective, and mm -hmm. it's West Point in like the late 1800s. Really good, fun mystery. Uh, I wasn't expecting it, the way it wrapped up, 
but I could not for the life of me understand what these people were saying until I turned on subtitles. And it, and I, sw- I thought it was just not loud enough. I kept turning it up, and you were fighting me about turning it up. Because it was too loud. <laughs> it, there's, it's not like we have children in, in there trying to sleep, but... I know, but still, like, I hate, like, one of the things I hate most in my day-to-day life is when I feel like the TV is yelling at me. Like, I, it just makes me upset. It's just like, this shouldn't be that loud. It makes me, like, physically uncomfortable when the TV is too loud. But it wasn't even that loud to begin with. No, but I'm like, it, the TV was, like, 60 or something. It was ridiculous. I'm like, no TV, no TV should ever be at 60. And if your TV is at 60, please make an appointment with an audiologist. You know, the TV goes up to 100. You gotta use the There's whole no range. reason for you to. It should be like. It doesn't need to be in like. Max. 20. Max. Max should be like 20. Max? Max. Jeez. Ideal yeah, tell, is tell like, like 15. The, all the streaming services have different volumes too. Yes, I agree with that. Disney. Disney is, you know, good at 20. Max like 30. Max. There should be zero reason it should ever get up to 100. And again, go see your doctor if you have it that loud. What's wrong? Nothing's wrong. I was looking at the audio. Okay. We have new audio set up uh, today. And I am trying still to figure it all out properly. Okay. Well, going back to what we that movie... Yes, I didn't watch it. Um, but we also watched a movie prior to that that I did watch the whole thing. What movie was that? I don't know the name of it. What was it about? Were you watching it, or is it just David and I? Oh, the, the, the one, one... It was like was the like high the school kids. Field. Yes, yes, yes. It was yes. called something about it in your room. There's something in your room. There's someone in your room. Something like that. It was something like that, and I thought, when he first turned on, I'm like, oh, I'm not going to like this. I got into that movie. I'm like, okay, so, so who did it? Yeah, and then we're, were we getting ready for dinner or breakfast or something? And I'm like, no, I want to see who done it. Who yeah, done it? You were glued to that. Who did it? Yeah, um, yeah, I was. I was about to say who did it, but yeah, that would be don't, spoilers. Don't spoil it. Well, we don't even know the name of it, so... I said it was, it's like, there's somebody in your room or something like that. Yeah, okay, and if I go on Netflix, I'm going to, like, there's find gonna this. There's going to be, like, 50 million TV shows that are exactly the same thing. It was good. I liked it. I liked that movie. Well, apparently so did David, because he, that's all he he likes, right? It's like the, the slasher action horror uh, films, is that what he, he was saying? Stuff, stuff, stuff like that? Listen, that one was good. I... Yeah. We also started watching this show called Crazy Ex-Girlfriend. Yeah, we did. Yeah. What a weird show this is. But I love this show. I love this show. It um it really just makes me happy. We start we we started this um January 1st actually. How how do you remember the date? Because we started it when I was sick. Oh. I did not start I did not start our the year good. It wasn't it wasn't great. Um I woke up ill. Um and not from drinking. <laughs> um but I woke up ill and and um I had a little 24 hour something or other. But um you know, when you're not feeling good, especially when, you know, your stomach's a little off there, uh, Warren wanted to watch The Stand, and I'm like, I do not want to watch that when I'm not feeling good. Um, we watched a lot of Seinfeld, and we turned this on, because I think at one point you're like, okay, I can take only so much Seinfeld in a day. Um, but it was really good, and we've been watching it ever since. I do, I generally have shied away from things that include musical interludes no. because it kind of freaks me out when people break into song even though i do it all my all the time and maybe it's because you know it's like a subconscious thing because every time i break into songs somebody tells me to shut up but 
Yeah, in this, it's up. it's like it's when she's breaking into songs because she's crazy, and that's how she's like processing what is happening. Yeah, I really like that. I really dig that. It kind of gives it an interesting twist, and makes me like the character. I, I dig seeing. I, I would kind of like, so the next time you have a hard time processing something and you just start singing about it. <laughs> sure, I'll try. Like you sing all the time anyway. I do. I so do. just, next time you're having a hard time, just, just start, start singing. singing. I'll try that. It would probably make you feel better. Maybe. But I don't think it would actually help me, <laughs> so, you know, figure out the thing that I'm trying to process. Well, try it. What, what would happen is I'd end up singing some <laughs> random song that I've heard all the time. Like, what was it? There was some song that was stuck in my head the other day. You mean you can't day. just make up music and lyrics on the spot? I, can, I totally can. <laughs> and I totally will. It's just not going to help me solve my problem. <laughs> How do you know that, though? I, I don't know. I don't know. I'll try it. How's that? I'll try it. I also want to, I, I want to give a shout out to uh, Uncharted 4 and Uncharted Lost Legacy. I liked these games so much more the second time playing through them. Uh, Uncharted 4 especially. It was just, wow. What? Just so good. Uh, other than the fact that I had really janky controls. I had a really hard time after coming off of God of War, uh, where it was just like smooth like butter controls. Uncharted 4 was just felt really clunky. It was kind of unfortunate. And I also played this game called Close to the Sun, uh, which aesthetically has a lot, shares a lot with the likes of Bioshock, but it's this heady sort of time travel, sci-fi thriller of a game uh, based in the late 1800s with N Nikola Tesla as one of like the main characters. And it's really, really cool, and I highly recommend it. In fact, I, I kind of want to do a video on it. Not a um, you have to play this, but actually a dissection. Mm. Um, but I want to see if I can get in touch with some of the writers. Because there are some... The way that the game finishes up was not how I was expecting it to finish up. And it was it's quite the choice. And I don't know if it was necessarily the right choice. It's an interesting choice. But like I said, I I want to I want to play the game again and see and see how I feel on it from a second time, knowing what I know now. It's like watching Memento over for the second time, or right. or any of those kind of games where the, where there or movies where the ending is what it's all about, really. Which is not what our video club pick of the day was. The Adam Project. pick of the month. Pick, pick of, of the, the month. month. Pick of the month. The Adam Project. Kim, this was. My pick. Your pick yeah. of the month for our Drunk on Writing yep. video club. Yep. And uh, what, why why'd you pick this movie, Ken? You know, um, it was on, I think, one of my su suggested suggested items or films or whatever Netflix does. Um, and I rather enjoy um, Ryan Reynolds. And, um, I mean, Jennifer Garner is always a delight. Um Mark Ruffalo is also in it. So I saw, hey, that's got to be, it's got to be decent, right? It's got to be a decent movie. I liked the movie. Did you? I did like it. Yeah. I thought it was cute. Our, Matthew was watching it in the beginning, and I think he was really getting into it, too. Um, did we let him watch the whole thing? No, we sent him to bed because he had to go to sleep, but... um. But he, he didn't, like, ask about it, like, the next day or anything, right? No, no, he yeah. had forgotten about it, but he would have sat there and watched it to the whole, to the whole ending. Um, did you, I take it you did not like it? I have some mixed feelings about the movie. I thought it was fine. Mm. I thought it seemed something like, the hallmark movie of a, a sci-fi Ryan Reynolds banter-led film. It was a very simple film. There was nothing... I, I never... So when, you, when you start playing with time, timey-wimey, BS kind of stuff like that, there's a certain expectation that things could get weird, right? And I never felt like this 
pushed the envelope in any real way, shape, or form. Like, there was a one point where there were three versions of Adam, right? Three different ages of Adam yeah. all there. And they don't do anything with that. They don't play with that. In fact, they, they go out of their way to, like, get the young one, like, off of the screen. And the fact that Mark Ruffalo, like, figures this out right away, and, and I don't, it just, it's all seemed too easy. You know, okay. I think that the biggest twist involved the main villain. And I didn't think it was that big of a twist. Uh, it, it was fine. It was fine. It, it, there were some funny lines. I really liked the kid. Yeah. I thought he was basically I thought he did a child job. version of Ryan Reynolds, which yeah. is exactly what you yeah. want this to be. But it, I don't know, it never really congealed. No. For me. Okay. It's fair. It's fair. I didn't have to fact check it, though. You didn't have to fact check it? Yeah, it's not satire. It's, a, <laughs> again, a fairly simple through line here. Okay. Well... I, I enjoyed it. I... I I enjoyed the actors. I I enjoyed the story. I liked that it wasn't too sci-fi weird. I don't really love like extreme sci-fi. Um, and I thought it was cute. I thought it was a cute movie. It was a what? Cute movie. Cute movie. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. I think that's a that's a fair assessment. Like I said, it was a Hallmark movie. So when we're looking at the rankings. If we're, if we're already going to get to that, which it doesn't seem like we have too, all that much to say about this movie. When we're looking at the rankings, uh, we're looking at Volume 2, we have, of course, the movie that you hate oh so much, Weird, yeah. um, at number 6, at the very bottom of the list. Elvis at number 5. Dunkirk at number 4. Don't Look Up at number... No, wait. Move all those up 1. So... Weird is five, Elvis is four, Dunkirk is three, Don't Look Up is two, and The Gray Man is one. Somehow I have them numbered one, three, four, five, and six. Okay. Not sure how that happened. No, I don't know. Um, Because this is not, I would not put this at number two, so that was not a preemptive. So, I mean, I'll give you a little bit of leeway on this one. Because I was adamant Weird had to be at the bottom. So. Okay. Where would you like to put this one? I, personally, did not think this was as good as Weird. Oh, hell no. This is not going below Weird. No. Which is no, why no, no. I was going to say that. I, however, I enjoyed it more than Elvis, which I would have below Weird. So I'm going to... I would put it below Dunkirk. Okay. At number four. I would put, I would put this at number four below Dunkirk above Elvis. All right. I'm okay with that. You agree with that? So our new ranking is one, two, three, four, five. Now, now it corrected itself. Very good. Very good job, notes. Our new ranking for the Drunk on Writing Video Club Volume 2 is The Gray Man at number one. Don't Look Up at number two. Dunkirk at number three. The Adam Project at number four. Elvis at number five. And Weird at number six. Now, what were you saying about... Elvis giving giving me some lead or the weird giving me some leeway with this. What what does that mean? Well, you wanted weird like really high, and I was like absolutely not. So you were you compromised with me last time. So I was like, okay, let's. I didn't really want. I didn't want high. I, mean. I wanted it above Elvis, which I thought was a... no, no. Elvis was not a bad movie. Elvis was not a bad movie. Okay. I, weird I, was a bad movie. Weird was not a bad movie. It was a bad, bad movie. Now we're going to, for my pick for next month, we're going to continue this trend of one-word titles. We have Dunkirk, Elvis, and Weird on our list so far. Well, the next one is going to be Life. Life? Life. It's currently on Netflix. Stars uh, Eddie Murphy and Martin Lawrence. What are you looking at me like that for? You don't know nothing about this. Okay. What? What? 
You tell know, me, tell me a little bit about this. Tell me, tell you a little about the movie Life. Yeah, what's it about? All right, hold on. I'll tell you. It's a movie from 1999. Two men in 1930s Mississippi become friends after being sentenced to life in prison together for a crime they did not commit. Wait a minute. So, okay, then it's not what I just googled. Are you thinking of life like? The board game? No, there's a life with um, Jake Gyllenhaal, Ryan Reynolds, aboard the ISS. No, not that one. No, not that one. Not that one. No, not that. No, life with Eddie Murphy. From 1999. Lawrence from 1999. Currently streaming on Netflix. I think what would be interesting. What would be interesting? Okay, life. We'll watch life. That's fine. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad you uh, approve of my pick for a video call. What would be an interesting experiment? Okay. Is for we'll do this one time each. Okay. Picking a movie that we find on the other person's account. Wow. Not necessarily in their queue. Not in their queue. Just you find on their account while browsing their homepage. Okay. Well, I mean, it's true. Homepages are rather unique to the individual. They're very... Because your Netflix is very different than my Netflix. It's startling how different they are. And then we saw we saw David's when we were... And, and his uh, is different. Up and his was just movies I'd never seen before. Well, because he it's more like the horror genre. Well, yeah. It, it is fascinating how many movies are available through Netflix that are just never on your feed, but they yeah. are, are on somebody else's. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, I think we, we do a good job switching it up. Okay. Uh, like, there was one that I wanted, but it was a little sci-fi, time travel -y, and I was like, man, we just did that now. Uh, something different, a little bit, something more grounded. I think you're going to like this film. Life. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Now, I want to bring it back, of course, at drunkonwriting.com, part of the perks of the uh, of, be, of being a patron uh, include being part of the Drunk on Writing show. Uh, at the participant level and higher, you can write in and, and come up with your own topics and uh, leave comments and be part of the show, just like this month, the Cinephiliac did. Welcome back to the Cinephiliac. Really? Yeah, welcome back to the Cinephiliac. Okay, nice. It was a, a welcome. patron from a, a while back. Cinephiliac wrote a long comment that I tried to parse through before this, but it's just a long one. And you know what? We're just going to read it, and we're going to see if we, there's anything we want to say on it. Okay. Okay, so this is, is it, this is the Cinephiliac. I know... We've already discussed adaptations through one of my first suggestions. I, I believe that was when we, we talked about like Sean Shaker yeah, and yeah, all those. Yeah, yeah, Through one of my first suggestions, but maybe more specifically, changing or staying from the source material and adaptations. Straying from the source material. My comments at Instagram about the 2020 The Stand miniseries had me thinking of it. He, uh, Sinfidak, left some comments there. Um, an example of the best case scenario for changes would be Kubrick's The Shining, which I thoroughly enjoyed more than the novel. A less lightning in a bottle example it would be the 2020 stand or the all but the ending 2020 series adaptation of Brave New World for Peacock. An example of it done poorly would be the 2019 Pet Cemetery adaptation. Hey, the Cinefiac, I liked <laughs> that adaptation. Okay, it's very different from the book. It's hardly an adaptation, but I like it. Uh, it's on the Cinefiac one of the second show. That just, yeah. Um, I don't want to go into all of these spoilers. Uh, Overall, just missed the mark, the mark for me. Um, hope you've missed and wordy. I hope you've missed my over long and wordy comments and thoughts on things. Much as I have missed Leafman, Cindy Feelack, you were desperately missed. We love when people write in and leave comments. So, so I didn't. General comment was: What do you think of adaptations and when they stray from the source material, and, or as opposed to when they stick to the source material? I generally hate them. You, you generally hate what? Adaptations. Just adaptations in general. Of books, yeah, yeah. 
It's kind of, it's kind, it's very, yeah, it's pretty rare that um, if I read something and then watch a movie, I'm gonna like that movie better. It's not happened. It's not happened often. Has it happened? Has it happened? Yes. Yes, it has. With, um, with what? Uh, I, I'm I, I don't uh I'm I'm struggling with which one I liked better. Uh probably Shawshank Redemption. I liked the movie more than the book. I would agree with that. The, 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 the movie is far superior to the book. It, it takes the ideas of the book and simplifies it in a way that makes it very easily digestible. Yeah, the other one that I was like arguing with myself with of which one I would would say is the body um stand by me stand by me yeah i think i liked the movie more than than that um but otherwise i generally dislike them cuz but here but here's the thing with me right and maybe this is me personally maybe this is how just i think maybe people work but it's probably me because I sometimes struggle with change a little bit. If you introduce me something first, that's probably what I'm going to go towards. Like, And then I see something different. I'm like, no, that's not how it's supposed to be. I don't, so, think, I don't think that's abnormal at all. I just wonder, had I never read Shawshank Redemption, the book, um, would I like the book better? Than, than the movie? I don't know. Well, I think there, there is something to be said about the, or the, the opposite. first version that you experience is going to potentially be... That's, that's your base, right? That's my base, yeah. So everything that you see after that, you're going to end up comparing it to your base. Yeah. And you're going to think, well, maybe that's better, maybe that's worse. But there, whether or not... It's better or worse in your base. That's still your base, so that's still your point yeah. of reference. Yeah. But there's been a lot that I'm like, no, I like the I like the book better. I think generally the books are 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 going to be better because you can. I think so much of what makes a book, and and if since you brought up Stephen King stories, I think what makes a Stephen King story so effective is he really dives into the inner monologues of and the inner motivations. Of his characters. Yeah. In a way that you can't really do on the film. One of the things that stands out to me for at least Shawshank, um, because I just, I love that movie so much. Um, but the book, if you're talking book versus um, movie, the movie does leave out a lot of the trauma that. Um, Andy went through with the sisters. Oh, yeah. Like, a lot of that is just not... Like, I think that would have pushed it up in the ratings, probably, well, had they... I mean, it's still there. It's just not... It, it's... Heavy. And it's, it's not, not though. Graphic. It's it's there. They, like, brush it. They brush it. But it's, it's barely... It's barely addressed. In my opinion, it's barely addressed. Did you want him to have the oh here's here's like extra? I mean, no, I didn't want to. I didn't want to see like graphic, some you know, him getting. Yeah. No, I didn't because that's that's traumatic for anybody. But um, I think they could probably could have touched on it. Just like they didn't have to show it, but I think it could have been touched on a little bit more because that, that was really a huge part of his story in the book. I, I think having the the whole, you know, stick that screwdriver in my ears and I'm going to bite down and they're, they're going to need a crowbar to, to get out whatever is in there. I, I, I think it was well implied. You don't have to be explicit when you can be <laughs> implicit sometimes. Okay. Okay. One of my favorite adaptations was the movie Sphere based on Michael Crichton's book. And that movie, I think, did a really close adaptation of the book, which I think was was a bit hard to do. Mm. But I think really pulled it off. And that's not a, I don't think that was quite too... 
I don't think that helped the movie, the fact that it was, it was close to the book. I, I, I think you should take the core for, when, if you're adapting something, you should take the core concept, the core theme. What, what is the story? What is this piece trying to get across? Is it a feeling? Is it a, is it a sense of isolation? Is there a message that it's trying to get across? And ensure that you can, if you, if you want to adapt it truly, ensure that whatever medium, medium you're adapting to, however you have to adapt it, you still want to be able to deliver that message. So the message should still come through regardless. I, I think that is something that was lost with Stanley Kubrick's adaptation where it, the book was so much more about addiction than the film is of The Shining. Like it's, it's, a, it's about something completely different, really, in the film. The, the, the addiction is there, but it's not the driving force. The, the hotel is the driving force. I can't, I still can't get over the fact that you actually want to go to that hotel and, Why and, and, I want to and go to that stay hotel? there. Yes. You want to, like, check in as a guest. Yes. First of all, it's not haunted. For, it's first of all, first of all, is that can is it an active hotel? Uh, I believe so. Like I can go on. Yes. Dot 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 com. Yes, I believe so. It's 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 a hotel. Yeah. No, I'm still not doing it. I'd rather like. Honest, honestly, like I'd rather stay at some sleazy hotel than well, stay like they, there. They don't have like that orange carpet along the whole thing. How do you know that? I don't. I don't. I you don't. don't. I don't. I suppose. I mean, they should. If I were them, I would. I no no. This is not like a me thing, right? You can go stay in that hotel, and I will stay in a different hotel. <laughs> I will stay in a nice hotel but with it's not, it's not comfy like, beds and it's not like the ghosts are real it's not like you know jack torrance is gonna come knocking on your door with a pickaxe i'm not saying the hotel um anyway yeah that that film was a tough film for me to watch the, the shining the shining yeah i don't really love that film um why Um. Okay. Skip that one. I, I just um. No, no, we don't need to skip it. I don't know. Jack Nicholson in that role. Not my favorite. Not my favorite Jack Nicholson role. I know he plays weird and crazy. Good. Um, I mean, he's crazy right from the get-go in this film, too. I know, I know. Um, I don't know. He gets, it just gets really creepy. It gets really intense and scary. Now, now, switching it up, what about films that are based on things? So instead of um, direct adaptations, uh, so, so uh, Enola Holmes, for instance. Enola Holmes based on Sherlock Holmes, right? I don't know if Anola Holmes is even a character in the Sherlock Holmes mythos before these Netflix movies. I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not that read up on it. But I doubt that they are. I doubt that she is. And I and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle certainly did not write Anola Holmes mysteries. So what do you think? What are, what are your thoughts on based on films and properties where they, they take something and they just spin it out and adapt it to their whim and just basically tie it into an IP. Again, I mean, it's the same thing as an adaptation. If I have seen that original or read that original and now you're going to take it and you can do something totally different with it, I'm probably going to loathe it. We like the Nola Holmes. Yes, but I, I kind of feel like that's different, right? Like, he, it's not taking Sherlock Holmes and saying, oh, Sherlock's going to be a shoe shiner. You know what I mean? And live a life of poverty. Wow. I don't 
I don't, I couldn't quite follow that thought there. I don't, so I don't, I, I, I think I lost the plot on, on your, <laughs> on your opinions on movies. So yeah, I think it, it just keeps going back to weird, doesn't it? It's just that you, there's these things that you just don't know if they're true. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, um, no, what I'm saying is, so Sherlock Holmes, he's a detective, right? It's not like the Enola Holmes is that far fetched from from Sherlock Holmes. It's still it's like Sherlock it makes Holmes, sense, but as but, like a girl. but as his sister, yes, right? Yes, I but, can and that's I why can it's an adaptation. I can I can go with that, right? Okay, I can go with that. But if you're gonna say, oh no, Sherlock Sherlock Holmes, he's not a detective. He's Sherlock Holmes, but he's doing something different in his life. I don't like that. Don't change that. No. So keep him Sherlock Holmes, but you can put him in random things. Just as long as he's still Sherlock Holmes. He has to be Sherlock Holmes, the detective. Yes. Solving some sort of case. Yes. Well, I think that's doable. I know I've seen some pretty bad movies. So you see where adaptations. It's completely different. I'm like, no, 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 no. Huh. Okay. Interesting. Or if they change like a vital plot point, I don't dig that. See, I really like that. I, I like don't when they, when dig they change that. stuff up and, and kind of surprise you. you know, uh, the cinephilic mentioned the stand there, and I'm, I'm still working on my dissection addendum for the 2020 the stand adaptation from CBS All Access, nay, or Paramount Plus, nay, CBS All Access. But I've written a lot. I read a lot. It's just it's an incredibly long piece, as I tend to do. And uh, there's a lot in this adaptation that's new to the adaptation. They change things up. They present it in different ways. I kind of really dig that. I think it's it, it's clever. It keeps people who know it engaged in a different sort of way. No. You just like you just like straight adaptations. You just want it to be like. If the book is good, yeah, yeah. If the book is good, yes. See, I, I like that a book can be good <clears throat> on its own, and, mm -hmm. a, and a movie can be good on its own, and they can both be based on the same idea. That's what I, that's why I really dig the Shining, the book, and then Shining, the movie, because. They overlap in certain ways, but they kind of go off in their own ways to kind of become their own masterpieces for different reasons. Even though I think the, the movie is better than the book. The Cinefit Act, I don't know if we actually answered your question. I don't think we really even had a question and just talking about adaptations. Well, but I hope that that conversation thrilled you as much as it thrilled me. Kim, this is the first time we've recorded with this sort of new setup. It's not so much different, I think. Uh, I think the, the audio should be okay. I've been watching the levels over here. I think it's going to be okay. I think, I, I think the post-production process should be much better. And hopefully this will make us able to record easily, more easier. Easily? Easily. Easier? I don't know. Whatever the word is. Yep. So we will record soon again. But are there any parting words you'd like to impress upon our listeners before we head out? Anything else you want to talk about today before we depart? No, I think I've hit everything I wanted to say. One thing I want to mention is Dixie's acting really weird. She's been on top of us like all day. She's been on top of us for most of the podcast, just a couple inches away from me right now, waiting for me to move, to turn this off. And, I mean, and I think something. she's sleeping. I mean, I don't know what you... Oh, she's, she's not she's... sleeping. She's not sleeping. But she seems like she's sleeping. She's like an alligator. She's waiting for movement. She's going to get up. She's breathing like she's sleeping. She, yeah, but then I'm, gonna, I'm going to shift. I'm going to move, and she's going to lift her little neck, and that, and her <laughs> collar is going to make that, that thinking... That, that little, like, little two-point, <clears throat> let's see, let's see what she does. 
Well, you, yeah, of course. Of course. You stood up and made a bunch of noise. Yes. What do you mean I stood up and made a bunch of noise? I stood up. I said, well, uh, as soon as I move, I'm gonna, she's going to do them. See, look at it. She wants to go. I don't know if she wants you to take her for you know what. You want to go for a walk, Jason? I mean, it's raining. <gasps> oh, it is? It's going to rain and then turn to potential snow. Yes. Really? We might have snow? We haven't had snow yet. You know that? Well, I mean, it's 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 flurried. Yeah, it's we, flurried. We, we had we had a, a minor flurry, but that was it. Okay. See, okay. you brought her See, up. I, I, I did. Just... Now I have to do it. Thank you all for listening. And I don't know how good this episode was, but it was it was an episode. This was an episode of the Drunk on Riding Show. I think we're getting better at this every time. This has got to work on her contribution. She just comes in here and starts whining. <laughs> Until next time, until next month, as always, cheers and keep on riding.